everyone's on borrowed time with the narcissist. Because it's always a matter of time before the narcissist concludes that you're no longer worthy of their time and their efforts. And generally, this comes at the tail end of a, of a long, steady, and painful devaluation. Where they would have slowly broken you apart, shattering your self-esteem and self-confidence to the point where you would have had nothing of value left in yourself. Nothing of value to offer to yourself or to the narcissist or to others. And of course, by the time the narcissist would have put you in that state, they would have lined up a replacement supply. Everything in good, perfect timing for the narcissist. So they only would have discarded you once they had sufficiently broken you down to the point where you essentially collapsed in yourself. And when they see you in that place, they know that you'll be in that devastated place for a long time to come, which for them guarantees a long period of post-discard supply and post-discard validation. Basically, you're the gift that keeps on giving because once they've left you, once they've discarded you, they know how much in a devastated place you are and, and that gives them lots of supply for a long time. But what if things don't go according to plan? What if you finally wake up to what you are dealing with before they discard you? And what if you unexpectedly discard the narcissist when they had not completely broken you down yet? When they had not lined up a suitable replacement supply yet? And when they figured there was still a lot more for the taking, they were not ready to let go of you. When you unexpectedly discard the narcissist before they're ready to let go of you, when you do it in that way, it's probably the worst thing you can do to the narcissist because you've removed yourself, their primary supply, from their reality at a time where they have no backup, no backup supply. And what that does is it causes them a supply shortage. And you would have done this unexpectedly, surprising them in a way which would have hit their sense of ultra self-confidence. Just collapsing their feeling of having to have control over events into oblivion. Because they try so hard to have control over things, other people. And they're very cocky about that. They're often ultra confident about that. And they were convinced that they had control over you and they had control over when the discard would happen, and it would have happened on their watch, and not yours. So you would have caused a, a severe narcissistic injury, potentially causing them to spiral into a full state of collapse. And the, the thing is, narcissists don't function properly. They can't think clearly. They struggle to self-regulate when they're low on supply. And now, out of the blue, you force them into this position where they have to hunt for a replacement supply. They have to try to line up a replacement supply, a new supply, at a time where they're just not able to put their best foot forward. They're just completely disorientated. They're in this kind of catch-22, kind of chicken and egg situation where they need good supply, they need to be well supplied so that they can sell themselves well to conquer new supply, but they're low on supply, so they don't really have the resources to conquer new supply. But they need that new supply, and it's just, they're low on resources. This is where narcissists go low. Where, even by their own standards, when they're in this disorientated, low-supplied existence, even by their own standards, they go low. They go low in terms of the people they're willing to entertain as potential supply sources. I'm talking potentially drug addicts, um, 
not high functioning drug addicts. I mean low functioning drug addicts. If it's a male narcissist, maybe prostitutes. You know, they'll they'll go. They'll entertain certain prospects they that they wouldn't normally entertain, if they even had reasonable supply available to them. And they often end up because they you know beggars can't be choosers, right? They often end up attracting people who are just as toxic as, or more toxic than, than they are. Because you might find that they come across somebody else who's in a similar state to them, being in no supply, low supply, and trying to find somebody else to supply, and they might meet their own match in a way. You know, they might meet somebody high in psychopathic, sociopathic, narcissistic tendencies, where they're trying to use each other. They, in a way, they know they're no neither of them is really good for the other, but they both need supply, so they kind of match up. That happens when they're, when the narcissist has been removed of all their supply, their life force. And of course, in the midst of that, at some point, they would probably try to get back, get you back. Because they would see you as being their salvation, of sorts anyway. Because you have the capability of taking them out of that mess. But at the same time, they might not know how to approach you. But nothing should surprise you at that point. Because chances are, they will at least try to get you back. And they'll try to hunt for other low-quality supply sources, which are the only ones that they might be able, able to reach in that disorientated place. But, I mean, the games they might play to try to get you back, the things they might do or say, just don't be surprised by anything. And make sure to, to stay no contact at this point. And keep your boundaries as high and strong as you can. Because this is where you need those boundaries.